Hey guys, welcome to the Caucasus region and let's do some radio navigation in the hip. So the map I've been using for all of these other tutorials does not have non-directional beacons, which is what we're going to try to look for today. The hip has a radio called the ARC-9, which is an automatic direction finder radio set that looks for non-directional beacons. These beacons have a f certain frequency, they can emit a sound, and they also give us a signal strength. But we don't get a distance, all we get is a direction out of them. We can use these for non-precise uh, landing approaches in instrument conditions, or just to navigate to specific places if we know there's a beacon there. So today we're on the Kuznetsov, and somebody's given us directions to Kabaletti, but we can't remember for the life of us what heading we're supposed to take. So instead, we're just going to tune into the ILS beacons, the inner and outer markers, and use them to guide us in to the airfield instead. So let's hop in the cockpit and have a look at how we set this up. But before we do that, I want to jump to the F-10 map and show you what these beacons look like. So here on the F-10 map, here's where we are up here on the left, and Cavaletti's just right over here, not very far. And just past the runway, in line with the direction, are the two beacons. The inner beacon has a frequency next to it of 490 kilohertz, and the outer marker has 870 kilohertz. So the hip lets us tune two different beacons at the same time. We're going to plug in both of these numbers and then we can switch between the one that we want to navigate to. And what it'll do is guide us in the direction of the beacon. It won't give us a, a distance to it, just a direction. And so we'll fly into this one, and then once we reach it, we'll switch to the other beacon, fly towards that one, and by then we should be so close to the runway that we should have no issues finding it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to enter 870 and 490. Okay, so this is all done from the pilot navigator seat over there, so we're going to hit 2 on our keyboard. And the first thing we do is look up. And we need to select the ARC-9 radio on our radio select panel. So we flip that over to ARC-9. And then all the config is done just down and to the left of there. So this panel is where we configure the ARC-9. We've got a reserve and a main. And then we have a selector down here that lets us toggle which one we want to navigate to. So we'll put in 870 here. And there's a big wheel that goes around the outside. 8, and then the inner one changes those, and then if we had to tune something like 875, we would use the little tuning knob here to fine-tune this and make adjustments, but we can leave it at 0 because we're good with 870. And the other one was 490, double check that, yeah, 490, and again we don't need to tune it because it's exactly 490. Uh, we're going to select the reserve to start with, and then we'll flip this over to the main after. And then we have to power the system on. So here's our main power switch. We'll flip this to compass. This gives us audio as well as a direction. You can hear the audio now. That's the beeping, the Morse code that matches up with the frequency we're tuned to. Antenna would give us just the audio uh, if we wanted to listen in for directions or something, or to see what station we're on and then loop would give us direction by way of audio by changing the strength of the audio in either ear to help guide us in the right direction. And that's if the compass mode fails. So once that's set in and enabled, if we look down here, our heading needle isn't pointed straight up anymore like it normally would. It's actually pointed at the beacon. And what we want to do, if I take my brake off here and just turn the helicopter, that arrow is going to go with it and it's always going to point us in the direction of the beacon. So what we want to do is line it up like this so that it's pointing at that little white triangle at the top of our direction our indicator. So let's lift up and we'll fly in the direction of our outer marker. And then once we reach it, we'll flip to the inner marker. And then that should get us to the runway. So we're up. And we're just going to follow that marker, that heading. Now as we get closer and closer to the beacon, it will be more difficult to keep it locked directly in front of us. But we'll just do our best to keep the beacon 
pointed right in front of us. And like I mentioned before, we don't have any kind of a distance indicator. We don't know how far we are aside from the strength of the signal. The only way we'll really know is when we either make visual contact with the beacon on the ground or when the needle suddenly is pointing behind us, which means we've flown over it. So we're just going to keep on heading inland here, and fairly soon we should be actually able to make visual contact on the beacon, the outer marker. So there's our outer marker on the ground right there, and you can see as we go past it, the needle is going to follow it. And then we're going to flip to our main, or our second one, and then follow that needle. And the general idea is, even if conditions were poor and visibility was awful, we should be able to get lined up by flying between these two beacons, which should put us on the right heading for the runway. We just follow this in. There's our inner marker right in front of us. And the runway right beyond that. So that's all there is to navigating with the Arc 9. You just need to know the frequency of the beacon, and ideally where it is would be helpful. But even if you don't know that, you can at least get yourself to the beacon just by tuning in. You can set two frequencies and alternate between them, which is nice when you want to do legs of trips. And this is uh, one of the two primary ways that the hip navigates. So if you don't have an exact heading and distance to your destination, but you know there's a beacon there, this will get you there. So I hope that made sense. I uh, hope I didn't miss anything or get anything wrong. If I did, let me know. And I'll see you guys for the next video.